Hi everyone, it's really good to see you again. For today's episode, I want to talk about afternoon tea etiquette. Now, if you've watched me for a long time, you'll know that I've done many videos about afternoon tea, but I've never really focused on the etiquette of the occasion. Although I've always emphasised that I don't like to focus too heavily on rules, a lot of you have been in touch to let me know that you would like some simple guidelines so that you can enjoy the ritual of tea and really partake in the experience. Also, as the world begins to open up a little bit, I understand that it is quite nice to be prepared for afternoon tea if you are visiting an elegant hotel or restaurant. So, stick with me and I will guide you through the etiquette and traditions of afternoon tea so that you can have the most fun time possible. The ritual of afternoon tea began in the 1840s when Anna Marie Russell, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, complained about the hunger between lunch and dinner time. I mean, we've all been there, right? To solve this problem, she instructed her servants to bring her some light refreshments, finger sandwiches, some little cakes and tea to fill the gap. She enjoyed this mealtime greatly and began to invite friends to join her for tea. When a royal guest, Queen Victoria, showed up for afternoon tea, the occasion was cemented as a great social connector and an opportunity for the aristocracy to meet and indulge in some tea and scandal. Although afternoon tea is today popular once again, it is more of a rare treat, a meal to be enjoyed at a posh hotel or restaurant. To many, it can be a complete minefield and the beautifully laid tables with their tiers of sandwiches and cakes, as well as delicate china teacups and saucers can be intimidating. I'm here to give you permission to relax. Afternoon tea is such a beautiful treat and one that we should all enjoy without worrying too much about the rules. Anyone with real manners would not even blink at a faux pas, so my number one tip if you are attending afternoon tea is to just have fun. So you may have heard afternoon tea being referred to as high tea or royal tea. For some reason, a lot of people seem to think that high tea is a superior version of afternoon tea. I guess it does sound quite fancy, but in actual fact, high tea is the poor relation to afternoon tea. The aristocracy could sit and enjoy their afternoon tea from 4pm in the afternoon. However, for the rest of the working classes who didn't finish work until after 5, sandwiches and cakes were just not going to cut it. Instead, they would have their tea at a high table with more substantial foods like meat, fish and baked goods. So high tea really has nothing to do with the more elegant occasion of afternoon tea that was created by the Duchess of Bedford. Now royal tea is another name for the occasion that I keep seeing. This is simply a term coined by hotels and it simply means that your afternoon tea will be served with champagne. So you may be wondering what you should wear to afternoon tea. Now when afternoon tea was first created by the Duchess of Bedford, society would take their meal in the finest drawing rooms of England and dress in their best gowns with all the accessories, hats, gloves and jewels. Although we aren't so fancy nowadays, afternoon tea is still seen as a special occasion, so it is nice to make a little bit of an effort and dress up. If you're going to a hotel for afternoon tea, it's probably best to check the dress code before you arrive. Most hotels would advise smart casual, but others will have a more strict dress code. I remember one time when I went to the Ritz in London for afternoon tea and I was putting my coat in the cloakroom. A gentleman wasn't wearing a tie and they actually gave him a tie to wear for the afternoon tea. So some of these hotels will definitely have a strict dress code that they will enforce. If you're doing an afternoon tea party at home, I would say that it's totally up to you how you want your guests to dress. If it's a very simple and laid back occasion, I'm sure you'll just tell them to come as they are and whatever they're wearing will be fine. But if you want to treat it as a more fun and uh, 
exclusive thing that you don't normally do, then maybe you want to have a little bit of a dress code. But again, as I always say, this should be a fun occasion. You don't really want people to be stressed about what they have to wear. So my advice is just to keep it simple. At a hotel, the tea will usually be served on a tiered tray and you work your way up from the bottom, which is where you will find sandwiches and savouries. Sandwiches will be cut into delicate fingers so that you can easily take them onto your plate and eat them with your fingers. You don't need to worry about eating them with the cutlery here. There will be a variety of fillings, usually cucumber, which is a classic British sandwich, something from the sea like salmon and then a chicken or meat filling. On the next tier, there will be scones. These are a very tasty sweet treat served with jam and clotted cream. There is an unresolved debate about whether you apply the jam or the cream first. Personally, I prefer cream first as it's easier to spread and then you can just dollop a little bit of the jam on top with a spoon. Either way, it's going to taste exactly the same, so I don't know why people get so passionate about this. The correct way to eat a scone is to break it in half with your hands. You can then take a little bit of jam and cream onto the side of your plate and add accordingly. This way, everyone else at the table doesn't have to wait too long whilst you spread the jam and cream on your scone. On the top tier, you will find cakes and pastries. They're usually very delicate and made by an expert pastry chef. You may be a little bit full by the time you get to this tier, but just take it easy, enjoy the occasion. This is what afternoon tea is all about, sitting back for a few hours with friends and just relaxing. So don't rush and enjoy. So if you're having afternoon tea at home like I am today, then you may be a little bit more casual than what you would see at a hotel. I don't have a cake stand, so everything else is just on plates, which is what is probably the same for you. So on my table, I've got, I've tried to make it as beautiful as possible. I've got some flowers here. So usually I just buy supermarket flowers and make my own arrangement. But when I was walking through Edinburgh the other day, I found this little beautiful bouquet and I loved these roses and then some of these more masculine elements here. So I decided to pick this one and I think it's very pretty for the table. So I've got my sandwiches served on this little onion plate. And I've just got ham, tuna, uh, cucumber and then a cheese sandwich. And then I've decorated it with a few tomatoes. My scones are here and I've dusted those with sugar. To accompany them, we've got some jam and clotted cream. Here we've got the teapot, and in there I've got Earl Grey tea that's been sitting there for about three minutes, and then we've got sugar cubes and milk, some tongs to pick up the sugar. Here we've got a cake plate with a chocolate cake. This is called an Empire Biscuit, and this is a famous Scottish traditional uh, biscuit. It's got uh, shortbread biscuit, jam in the middle, and then it's iced on top. So this is Battenberg cake. This again is another famous British delicacy, and this is one of my favorites. It's basically sponge with jam in the middle, and then around the edge, you have an almond marzipan. So it's a very sweet treat. Not everybody likes it, but yes, it's one of my faves. I've also got my teacup and saucer. This is a design called Chelsea Porcelain, and it is made by the Royal Collection. I've also got the matching plate here. A nice placemat here from Rebecca Udall Home. I've got this linen napkin, which is actually designed by me. These are from my first collection that I did last year. These were limited edition, but I'm thinking about bringing them out again. I've got a silver teapot here, which is filled with hot water. This is so that you can keep refreshing the teapot. And then I've got a bell. In times gone by, you might need to call the butler. No one's going to come today, but it kind of looks a bit cute. And lastly, I've got my tea strainer here. This is if you're using loose leaf tea, you just pop it onto the teacup, pour in the tea and it will catch the leaves and then you can pop it back onto here. So this is a pretty nice tea table. It's got very simple items on there, but altogether it manages to look quite special. And I think this is a nice occasion to have guests or family and friends over and really impress them. Because I'm quite a fan of entertaining and afternoon tea, I've acquired all of these items over time. Some of them were gifts 
and for me that is one of my favorite things to do so even though it looks like there's a lot of stuff on here it has been collected over time and you don't have to spend a lot of money in doing in buying these items i mean these dishes here were from john lewis i think they're about six pounds and they're very pretty they're shaped like onions and you can just build a collection over time so do that if you want to start having a lot of tea parties and dinner parties buy pieces when you can afford them and then eventually you will have an entire collection One of the questions I get asked the most is how to drink tea and people have asked me to do a video about this quite a few times and I have done a video about that. I will link it here so that you can watch that if you want to. It's a really in-depth video about everything about tea and how to drink tea properly. But to quickly summarise, I'm going to show you the correct way to drink tea at afternoon tea. So at afternoon tea in a hotel, you'll probably get the choice of a lot of different teas. If you're not really sure about what tea to have, I would suggest that you speak to your waiter who will happily give you a suggestion and a recommendation. If you do know what kind of tea you want, then that's good. For me, I always like to have Earl Grey because I find it goes really well with tea sandwiches, especially cucumber sandwiches, and it's quite clean on the palate, so I like to have that. Now, with loose leaf tea that you get in a hotel, it will be in the pot already, and then you will have a strainer at the side of your teapot and you can just pop this on top of the cup and pour the tea into the cup. And this will just catch any leaves that are in the pot so that they don't go into your cup. And then you can just give that a quick flick and pop it back on there. Now, if you're having uh, milk or sugar, this is the time to add it in. Usually when you go for afternoon tea at a hotel, you will get sugar cubes. This is the traditional way. It's also quite nice to have a nice pair of tea tongs to pop them in something a little bit different not something that you do every day now another question that people ask is do you put the milk or the tea in first as you can see i've just put the tea in first there's no real correct way to do this but i think the consensus is is that putting the milk into the cup first is something that comes from another time when people were quite poor their cups were made of not bone china, so the thing was that if you put the tea into the cup, it may crack. So putting the milk in first would cool the cup, stop it from being so hot, and prevent the cup from cracking. If you're an upper class person, you wouldn't need to worry about that. Your tea cups will be made of bone china and are very readily able to withstand the hot temperatures of the tea. I don't have sugar with any of my drinks. I stopped that about seven years ago. I do have milk in English breakfast tea and in coffee, but with Earl Grey, it's quite a full taste that you don't really need to add anything else. You can add lemon slices if you wish. So you, if you want to add milk and sugar, you would do that. And then to stir it, what you would do is you take a spoon and you start, you look at the teacup as a clock and you start at 12 and then just do a backwards and forwards motion from 12 to six o'clock and flick. You don't need to be doing this around the cup, which is irritating for everybody who's at the tea party. So now that we've settled the way to properly stir your tea, now we're going to focus on how to drink the tea. A lot of people seem to think that when you drink your tea, you are supposed to stick out your little finger here and drink it like this. This, I don't know where this comes from, but it's not really the correct way and it actually looks a bit silly, so I would advise you not to do that. You can if you like, but I would advise you not to. The next thing is about drinking your tea. If you're sitting at a table like this one, you don't need to pick up the teacup whilst you're drinking your tea. You just literally leave the tea saucer on the table, pick up the tea and drink it like this like normal. If you were having a cup of tea standing up in a group, then obviously you would hold the teacup like this and drink your tea like that. But when you're sitting down at a table, you can leave the teacup on the table and just drink it from the cup. If someone is offering to top up your tea with a teapot, you would just pass the teacup and saucer over to them and let them pour in the tea and then pop it back down. Thank you so much for joining me for Afternoon Tea. I really hope that this video has been useful in terms of teaching you the correct etiquette and customs of Afternoon Tea. But please remember that this is just guidelines and as I always say, just have the best time possible. That is all that I want you to do. 
I will see you next Friday for the next episode, but until then, have a really great weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye.